Hello, you wonderful people. Today, I want to make a quick video talking about data structures and algorithms. Why am I saying this right now? Well, I have a bunch of friends that I know that for whatever reasons are either in between jobs or got laid off and looking for jobs. And so interviewing is a skill. And that's something that we have to develop and improve on in order to be able to pass this gatekeeping, if you will, to get hired. Some people argue, are the are those types of interviews relevant or not? The matter of fact is, if that's the process a company takes to gauge you as a developer, then it is what it is. And so all we could do is figure out how to get better. So a lot of people ask me, where do I stand on learning data structures and algorithms? I still stand to this belief, if you're learning to code and you're just starting out and you can't build a project, even if it's a basic CRUD application, create, read, update, delete, that calls an API, interacts with a database, and you're able to write data and get data, doing image upload and stuff like that, then in my opinion, learning algorithms and data structures is pointless because you can't build anything yet. So to me, as a self-taught developer, one of the first things that I really strive to do is get to the point where I'm actually able to build a project. And when I got hired on my first job, I didn't have to do any algorithms or data structures. I basically just talked about what I've built in the past, what technologies I used, and they hired me. Now, I think I got lucky in that sense of not having a traditional interview, but at the end of the day, the only reason I was able to keep that job because the things that they required me to do are the things that I was familiar with and was able to do. So I got the job that was just right for my role. And of course I learned a tons the first three months working my first dev job. But with that being said, the truth is when you go into interviews and you go into the process, a lot of jobs have very specific process and they'll ask you certain general questions in your domain. And you might be asked to solve some sort of algorithmic whiteboarding question. So in today's video, I just want to give you my tips of what I'm doing and you could take it as another opinion that someone's giving you and see if it's valuable for you. Traditionally, people will get that green algorithmic book and then go on sites like Lead Code or HackerRank. I like HackerRank, Lead Code, I've never tried, but the first thing that I really started working on is this website called Code Wars. I really like it because it allows you to work on improving your coding skills but it's still not as intimidating in my mind as hacker rank, but don't get it uh, twisted as you progress in this cold wars levels, they get harder and harder and harder, but that's still not the thing that I want to say because sometimes looking at lead problems, even for me, it was very difficult to understand what I was doing. One of the hardest challenges that I found myself struggling with is that I was not able to really understand how the algorithms I was learning about or the examples that I was doing on HackerRank apply to day-to-day -day jobs. And so I ended up going on and taking courses just to kind of help me familiarize myself with what the hell I was trying to learn in the first place. So I ended up buying courses on Udemy. The one course that I would I really liked and recommend, it was really nice, is this data structures for cracking the code interview with animated examples. They have Python, but I, they also have it in Java, but that's not what I did. I bought it with JavaScript. I'm sure it's here it is. So I bought this course with JavaScript because I'm a JavaScript developer. So sometimes you might need to buy a course and I just wanna share courses that I took and tried. This was a really good one. By the way, Free Code Camp has a lot of great courses that you could do for free. And another paid service or course that, that I took that was very useful is this website called Structy. I felt like they did a really good job organizing their lessons and helping you learn the basics about algorithms. And of course, as you could see, there's plenty of paid uh, suggestions. And this is not the path that I recommend you should take. This is the path I did take, but it still wasn't the clear winner for me to be able to solidify the knowledge. So the two things that I really like because I'm more of a visual person is I really enjoyed this JavaScript data structures course. It was really great with a lot of visual examples that kind of started helping me to understand and learning about basic algorithms 
but my most favorite site to learn how to do things is Brilliant. Brilliant did not sponsor me, Jesus Christ. I wanna get some of that Brilliant cash, but all kidding aside, this is an amazing service and they have a lot of great co uh, courses. And I was working through the computer science fundamentals and algorithms and data structures, CS and programming. The cool part about Brilliant is that it is very visual oriented and you get to do the challenges and they're broken down to bite size examples. The thing that Brilliant does better than most is that it shows you those algorithms in real life examples. And so the even though I showed some of the different sites that are available to you, my favorite is brilliant.org and the path that I started to take into help me solidify the process about data structures and algorithms is actually putting them into practice. So this is what I do now. So I started learning about graphs. So I decided, let me build a little train track simulator where I'm able to create a train. You could set the start and end. And when you click start train, it's going to go ahead and take the path to destination. What's cool about this is I was learning how to represent the train tracks as a graph. And more importantly, I learned about how to think about being able to find the shortest path to the destination and what algorithms work best. And only by building these type of examples, if I say start train, it will go ahead and try to find the shortest path. I started learning not only about how this data could be represented via graph, but also what algorithms are best for being able to find pathfinding. And by the way, if you get really bored of doing things like this, if it's not fun, I would say trying to make a little game in the meantime, it is a fun way to learn about different data structures and algorithms and logic solving. So I'm not saying that you should go into game dev, but there were interesting things I had to try to figure out and solve when building this game. Games make you think about things a little bit more than just building a basic website. But the winner for me is when you learn about certain algorithms and certain data structures is try to apply them. And so I created this little map visualizer where I'm able to add points as graph nodes and I'm able to add connections to these nodes like so through dragging and connecting the nodes to each other through edges and we could have multiple connections and then once you have your representation of the graph I could set a start point I could set an end point and this is going to show you the shortest fastest path to the endpoint. And in this example, I'm using a star algorithm. And this is still something I'm learning about. And the reason I say still learning about because this is just something you continue to learn about. It never stops. But what I like about this example here is that before we're looking at a graph data structure, it was just bunch of code and not being able to kind of see how that could be used in a real life example is something that kind of made it harder for me to understand what the hell I was trying to do. It's only when I took the example and brought it to the real world, I was able to kind of start to understand how these data structures and algorithms are used. And not to make this video any longer than it has to be, basically what I'm trying to say, if you're going to interview, learning data structures and algorithms becomes an important part. But if you're just starting out and you can't build a simple application, that's where you should start first. There are many ways to learn from lead code to hacker rank. The most important thing I could say is that you have to make it fun. And for me, the funnest way about learning about algorithms wasn't doing lead code. It was trying to use things like brilliant.org, learn about data structure and algorithms, and then taking at the lead code list of algorithms or questions that they have. But instead of solving them there, try to build a visual representation of that algorithm or that data structure and use it in a way that makes it relatable to real life. And this is something that I encourage all of you to do. So with that being said, I just wanted to make this quick video, like it, hate it, I don't care, but this is something that's been helping me to stay motivated, try to dive deeper into algorithms and data structures to continue to learn.
more and more and to continue to improve my development skills. This conversation around, should you go to bootcamp? Should you be self-taught? Should you learn computer science? At the end of the day, you just need to learn things that make you a better programmer. I hope this video has helped you and I'll see you in the next one.